it's Gail Goddard. Welcome to the Houston Clutter Coaching Meetup Group for March 2016. Today, say hi everybody. Hi. hi. Uh, we're going to talk about getting unstuck, simple ways to overcome overwhelm. So I know that a lot of you come to this room for this very reason, right? Because you're overwhelmed. The thing about being overwhelmed is the step from overwhelmed to not being overwhelmed is so incredibly short, you can't imagine. You just have to do something to start. And when you're feeling frozen, and like you can't possibly, you don't know what to do, you don't know what to do, when people tell me they're overwhelmed, they start saying, I just don't know what to do. The truth is, there is no magic first step. You just need to take one. And it doesn't matter which one that you do, they're all going to get you going somehow. So how many of us spend five times as long avoiding the task <laughs> as it will take to complete it? <laughs> okay, so everybody raise their hand. Let me just say that on the video, right? They all agree, right? When you realize that you are stalling, you're avoiding, 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 it's time to get serious with yourself and say, okay, I realize that I'm stalling now and I need to do one of the steps that Gail said to get overwhelmed. So we're gonna give you a list here today and then let you guys ask questions and specific questions, but the best message I can give you here is any step will get you going, any step will get you past overwhelm. And we're just gonna talk about a variety of creative and entertaining ways to do that, okay? All right, <clears throat> number one. How about moving things back to the right room? Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when you go in the room and the house is real crazy, you realize that there's a whole bunch of things in this room that really belong in the bedroom or the kitchen or the living room, right? They've just ended up in the wrong room. If you don't know where to start, if you feel like it's too chaotic, it's an easy thing to do to go into room A and look for things that don't belong in room A and go put them in room B and C and D, right? You don't have to make it nice in B and D and C, right? They're all, you know that the house is already messy anyway. And it's, if it's messy in one place, it's probably messy everywhere. So if you're gonna pick this as your way to, uh, to do it, all you care about is take it out of the wrong room, go put it in the right room. You're still gonna have messes in both places, but the messes that are in that room are supposed to be in there. Right? And that's all you're aiming for. So that's a little bitty short way to reshuffle your contents and try to get started. Hopefully, as you're doing that, you're gonna find a few things that you're willing to let go of. For instance, you're gonna you're pulling out this thing that goes in a different room and you're gonna find some trash and you can take that into the trash. Or you're gonna find that long lost flyer for the event that now has gone by. Right? You might, in your process of moving things from room to room, pick up some little extra things along the way. But if you're having really a hard time getting started and you're really feeling stuck, don't try to organize anywhere along the way other than it comes out of the wrong room and it goes into the right room. Later, when you feel like everything's in the right room, you can go in and start working on a room. But to start with, you just want to do all that moving around. And it's something you can do one thing from here to there, and you can be distracted and nothing's wrong. If you do two things out of the rooms, and then you get distracted, it's okay. So it's a way that you can start and stop as many times as you need to, to keep moving the project along, right? Okay. One way to get going is to isolate a smaller part of a larger project. So this is another pick a room method. Pick a room, any room, kitchen. Go into the kitchen and don't look at that and say, I'm going to organize the kitchen now. Go into the kitchen and pick the spices, the utensil drawer, the junk drawer, the shelf with the pots and pans on it, which always looks really crowded because pots and pans are big, right? But when you pull it out, there's like eight things. So it doesn't take long to do that shelf. So if you focus on finding a smaller portion of a larger problem, you will, it's a way for you to get going, right? You just say, I'm only going to do this tabletop. I'm only going to do this kitchen cabinet. I'm only going to do this drawer. 
I'm going to ignore the rest of the things in the room. I don't care about them. La, la, la. <laughs> I'm only going to work right here. <laughs> then you have, you know where you're starting. You have an end point. And when you get to the end, you can go, da, 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 happy dance, happy dance, right? And walk away. Because if you're trying to get unfrozen, you need to do the little, little steps that sort of gather your momentum, right? So be a cheerleader for yourself. <laughs> and if you get a little bitty shelf done or the spice is done, you gotta do the happy dance, right? And be happy about having accomplished that much. And if you're done for the day, go away, come back and do something another day. If you feel inspired after you've done the spice rack, and you can go do the pots and pans too before you get irritated, go for it, right? Okay. <clears throat> Maybe you want to do something that you're certain can be done in one sitting. So then let's pick little bitty stuff like do your purse or your wallet. Usually a bigger project for girls and guys. <laughs> but guys do stuff a lot of stuff in the wallet, right? You end up with a million pieces of paper and then you pull them out and you're like, why do I have all these pieces of paper? It is a microcosm thing that's very easy to do. It's contained. It's very obvious where your purse starts and finishes, right? So you can take all the stuff out, throw out all the trash. There's always a bunch of trash in the bottom. When I go into people's closets and pull out the purses, the first thing I do is start pulling stuff out of the purse. And like, whoa, yeah, yeah, we're cleaning the purses. I pull all things out and have the trash. It's the Kleenexes and the open lozenges and the, you know, broken hair clips and the pencils and whatever pieces of paper from people handing you things as you're walking around. It's really easy to bring down the weight of your purse in a big hurry if you go in and dig it out. <clears throat> it is another small, compact thing to do. Another one is um, go into your closet. And most people, if they have even remotely a walk-in closet, they find the closet really intimidating. But if you just go in and ignore the stuff up here and just clear the floor, like your project in the closet is to clear the floor. So if you get, if you start to pull things, if it's touching the floor, you're allowed to touch it. And if it's not touching the floor, you ignore it. That's a way for you to dig a path for yourself so that when you're finished, you'll be able to walk in the closet again. And then when you come back another day to the closet, you won't be climbing over all the stuff on the floor, right? It's a perfect microcosm thing to do that's limited. It'll require you to pick up stuff. You'll still be making decisions, but it's finite. It's very, very finite. And it has a good result of setting you up to come back and do the closet another day. <laughs> There's another one besides that. The purse, oh, the medicine cabinet. Uh -huh. is a good one. It's a small little box, right? And it has a few little shelves in it, and you might have shoved a bunch of stuff in it, but it's super easy to get out of that because the stuff, the medicines, and all of the over-the-counter drugs, and the lotions, and potions that end up in there, they all have expiration dates. So it makes the decision-making process in the medicine chest super easy. Gee, these meds are from 1995. Can't really take those, right? Super easy. What do you do with the meds? Don't flush them. Right, <laughs> don't flush them. Um, medicines do require a little intervention. Uh, I take mine, because I have cats at home, thank you, so I have used litter. So I collect that kind of stuff, and when I take them from clients, I take it home and dump it into the cat litter that's going out of the house. Because, you know, the cats are always creating a new supply. And I do that because then it's in wet uh, material that is designed to absorb. And so it goes out in a bag, in the trash, and then it's gone. If you don't have a cat or <laughs> a friend that has a cat nearby, then um, you probably can take it back to the pharmacy. Because they just dispose of stuff. They might frown at you, but smile pleasantly and ask anyway. And they also have a... <clears throat> The city of Houston, for instance, has monthly or quarterly, is it monthly or quarterly? Take backs, quarterly, where they have sort of a pharmacy drop off in several locations in the city, and you can drive on a particular day and drop them off, and then they dispose of them properly. So there are um, getting to be more ways to let go of them, but the short one is cat pharmacy. <laughs> cat. <laughs> okay. Hi, um, 
sometimes people tell me that they have trouble staying focused on the task. Part of their overwhelm is that they can't stay focused. So one of the things that I suggest to people is to get a kitchen timer. One that actually makes a ticking noise. Tick, 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 tick. It doesn't have to be loud. But if you set it for 20 minutes and listen to it ticking in the background, and when 20 minutes goes by, you're gonna get a big bell noise. It helps you stay focused and it rewards you when you get to the end, right? Because you get a big signal that it's time to stop. So if you want to practice staying focused to get started, <laughs> set it for five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and keep doing something until the bell goes off. And then if you've had it for the day, stop and go away. If you feel like you're just getting started and you got a little bit more in you, set it again. You can do that as many times as you want until you get annoyed or, you know, burn out or whatever. But the idea is that listening to the time go by and being dinged at the end is an artificial race that you create in your head and it helps you stay focused on the task. <clears throat> the other uh, method is the one that Ed was talking about earlier. Uh, and it's from Jennifer in Maui. Hi, Jennifer. She wrote on here, and I'm going to quote her. Normally, I get distracted or bored when cleaning or clutter clearing, but if the Clutter Free channel is playing on YouTube in autoplay, Gail is continually talking in the background. In 15 or 20 minutes, when I normally, normally be drifting to do something else, the audience and Gail's suggestions are there spurring me on. Aww. So you can listen to yours if you guys are all asking me questions and talking, and when you're getting bored, there's still somebody back there. It's like you have you know, your clutter companion, right? There's a million videos out there, mine and a million other people. So find one you like to listen to in the background and let it play, and that will help you stay focused too. And when you're starting to feel aggravated, somebody's back there, you know, feeling your pain and talking about organizing, right? It's a good way to stay focused. This is a problem that sometimes people have when I, when I go to the house and it is completely, completely full. Like all of the rooms are backed up. It's really narrow pathway through the house. It's a really big, like it's gotten to the point where it's a really big project. So the first question they ask me is, we're gonna sort, but where are we gonna sort? We don't have any room to sort. This is where you get to play a game and set to get started. If you are feeling overwhelmed because you don't think you have enough space, pay the, play the 27 pieces game which we were talking about earlier. You pick up two bags and you go through the house looking for 27 pieces of trash, 27 pieces of things to donate, right? So the goal isn't to organize anything. It isn't to figure out, start or stop the sorting process. You're just going on a hunt, looking for things that can go in the trash bag, looking for things that can go in the donation bag. When you get to 27 things, you're done. I would guess a half an hour. And that means you don't have to stay anywhere for more than a second. You can stay in your closet and go, I don't want that shirt, I don't want that shirt, that's two things in the bag, you can leave the closet. You can go in the kitchen and pull out this thing and that thing and leave the kitchen. You I mean, it's very easy and it's designed to not make you stay in one place, still getting things to go out of the house. If you have 27 pieces of trash and 27 things of donation at the end, you got 54 things out of the house. Did I do that math right? <laughs> Thank goodness. Used to be an accountant, but you can't always tell. <laughs> Those 54 things will no longer be in your house. And you can take the trash bag and go put it in the trash outside. You can take the donation bag and go put it in the car. And then you haven't had to sort anything at all. You're just plucking things off the sea to be removed. And it's an artificial construct, of course. The number 27 is just pulled out of the air. But it is a high enough number that it feels like you've really made a donation bag at the end, right? And yet it's not so huge that you feel like you have to dig out the whole room to get started, right? And that's something that you can do every day for 30 minutes. Okay, I've got my two bags. I'm going to go look for 27 pieces of trash. I'm going to go look for 20, you know, 27 pieces of mail that have been laying around the house that you know you want to throw away. Or magazines or you know, open to carton or here's the shipping container, all that can go in the trash slash recycle slash whatever it's going away, right? And the other bag is, these are things that I no longer want to own. And you don't have to do the organizing part of the project. You're just thinning the herd. 
in the, in the easiest possible way. And it's a game, too, to think, you know, can I get to 27 today? <laughs> can I find 27 things I'm going to let go of? It makes it a little bit easier. It makes it a little bit goal-oriented. And you're still getting things out of the house, even if you're stuck, right? Okay. Those are my quick suggestions. So now I want to hear from you about what gets you in your way, what's making you be overwhelmed. While you think about that, <clears throat> I'm going to drink something. <laughs> I have lots of clients that call me. I mean, most of my clients are, hi, I need help. I'm totally overwhelmed. And usually it means that they're standing at the door of whatever room or the door of their house and looking out into the sea of stuff and saying, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And I think it's a whole picture point of view, right? Like you look at the whole project that has to be done and you can't figure out how to do the whole project. But the good thing about clutter is you don't have to know how to do the whole project and you can still make things go away, right? It's still a way to get things out of the house a little bit at a time. If you're stuck, peeling off those little pieces and making that little start step is the way to go. Who has a question? Piles of paper. Piles of paper. Okay, so please elaborate the question. <laughs> well, it's not like newspapers and that sort of thing. It's uh, it maybe something that seemed important at the time and sort of got in the pile. Or maybe it needs to be filed and got in the pile. It's just in the pile on the table and so you can't see the table anymore. <laughs> right? So is that where you process the mail? All that paper that you have sitting in the piles? Actually, most of the mail I throw away before I come back to my place. That's good. But, you know, it's things like having done taxes, for instance. I've got stuff that I needed for that and things that need to go away. Okay. And it's just, I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah. So um, she's basically saying there is bunches of paper that it's either was important at one time or related to a project at one time or needs to be filed now, and she just doesn't want to do it. Yeah, I can't really help you with that. <laughs> no, actually what I'm saying is most of us don't want to do it. And so I guess the question for you is how do you get the stuff that you're piling to be equal to the amount of effort you're willing to put in. Or divide by pile, perhaps, and have a pile be a mini. <laughs> well, you can have um, categorized piles, but then you still have piles and you can't see the table. <clears throat> if I was going to be at your house, for instance, I would go through the file pile, the things that you designated need to be filed, and have a conversation with you about why it's in there. Like, why do you think you need to keep it? Because I'm guessing that you're probably using the knee-jerk response of, I'm done with this, but I'm afraid to throw it away, therefore I'm going to file it. <laughs> but then it's not important enough to actually file. Or the filing part, you know, managing the paper and putting it away in categories so that you can find it again, is annoying, right? Well, it's full, and I just don't know if I should throw away the stuff that's already filled the file, or what? Because I've torn it off. I have like piles of stuff, and something is really important, and yet when I go to the file, it's not in there. Full, and I don't know if I should throw those things away or not. So with a few exceptions, most of my clients that have a full filing cabinet and are running out of spaces to put stuff are saving way too much. So given what you're saying to me, like my file cabinet is already full of stuff and I have more backed up to go into it. Well, it's not actually a cabinet. It's just like the file on my desk. Okay. I don't need like a, a giant file. Like that. that would just be a disaster. Right, 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 right. Well, so if you only have one file drawer, then then you might need a second box. And really, most people, and personally, you know, keep business out of the discussion for now. Most people personally need some permanent files that you have forever, related to your legal status, your vital records, you know, the house that you own real estate, your car, that kind of stuff. That is, you know, basically a file box worth by the time you get done. And then you have another set of files that might be more tax related. That's they're rotating every year over and over. And 
most people can get away with two boxes and be done. To you know, think of a regular file box from Office Depot. That amount of space. If you're rotating and purging the files often enough, you can get away with two boxes without any trouble at all. Because all the tax stuff, when it, taxes are done, it goes together as a bundle. It goes into the tax box and it goes up in you know the corner in the dark somewhere in the closet until it's time to throw it away. The stuff that's in your drawer in your desk should be pretty current stuff. If you're actually doing work at your desk, then it's, it needs to be stuff you're working on. But you know, unless you're a millionaire with a gazillion investments all over the place, you know, your record-keeping needs are a little bit bigger. But even so, they're, they're maybe double. Maybe you need four file boxes instead of two. Otherwise, you're probably keeping too much stuff. If you're only trying to work in one box, then I would go through and find out what, what you need to be able to access most often. And the rest of the stuff goes into a second box right and that should be enough <laughs> if you have piles so here's one thing about piles <laughs> it is a filing method <laughs> some people visually do better with piles like they say to me when you put it in a file into a cabinet and close the door it's like erased from my mind out of sight out of mind mm -hmm. right so some people tell me that that is true but it is a fallacy that if it's in a pile that you are seeing it. Because once the pile has more than one piece of paper in it, you're no longer seeing the rest of the pile. But you know where it is in the pile. Generally. <laughs> right? Yeah. And, well, so I was talking about Michael Green the other, earlier today, right? Where they had to clear a space for me to sit down. And you could tell that this is where she sat and worked because... <coughs> There was a row of paper around in front of her all over the floor in this big semicircle <laughs> in front of the couch. And that was where she was, you know, sorting and putting paper out in front of her. And it's like she was basically filing on the dining, I mean, on the den floor. Like that was going to be an effective way for her to know where it was, right? And once it's more than a few pieces of paper, you lose control in the piles as well. It's not a realistic filing system. And, and it's, for people that want to be able to see it, it makes them really nervous. So one of the things you do is you create files that stand up on the desk, for instance, in a racking system. So then the next thing that I have to short circuit when I tell people that is they're like, woohoo, um, things are standing up on the, I'm, okay, I got to go get some of those racks. And then I come back and there's like 16 racks <laughs> and there's a million files and they still can't find anything, right? Because there's like a million files. So <clears throat> piling, I think, is a combination of a couple things. One, you're probably very visual. And two, it's a way to delay decision, mm -hmm. right? I got a lot of uh-huhs in that one, right? Oh like you pick it up and you go, ugh. <laughs> I don't know what to do with it, I don't know what to do with it, uh, right? And it goes back down so that you can pick it up again another day, right? Um, I do recognize that not everybody is a samurai decision maker, right? And, uh, but there are some things that you can feel comfortable with, more comfortable with than others. And so I would, A, practice making quicker decisions, practice with um, papers that make you nervous. <laughs> like if you're if there's if there's a particular kind like explanation of benefits, right? Uh, Everybody yes. gets those from the insurance company, right? Uh, here's what they're for. You've all heard this before. They have to tell you what they're how they're handling your business. Your insurance company, you pay them premiums so that they will pay your doctors. Right? And then they are required to tell you. Thank you so much for paying us a premium. You, the, your doctor submitted a bill, and now we have paid it. Aren't you happy? And you can look at the piece of paper and go, oh, look, they paid Dr. Smith, and now I owe Dr. Smith $7.12. Cool. Once you agree that they've done what they're supposed to do, that piece of paper is now not important to you. And there's a caveat. If you are in the middle of chronic care for something, if you are in the middle of recuperating from a big surgery 
I would hang on to stuff for a while until all the bills kind of settle out. But basically, when you go to the dentist and you get an EOB and you go for your checkup and you get an EOB and you go because you have the flu and you get an EOB, you look at it and you say, oh, look, they paid the doctor. And then you're done. Right? But most people look at that and go, ah, it's about insurance. I don't know what it means. I should keep it. <laughs> this is the kind of um, stuff that I'm talking about. You can educate yourself about, I always keep these kinds of pieces of paper. Why do I do that? And can I ask somebody to explain it to me? And maybe I can change my response to this kind of paper. Right? Those piles are full of things that you don't feel comfortable about. And I would go through looking for those things that you don't feel comfortable about and see if you can come up with a solution for them. Can you come up with all the solutions at once? No. <laughs> but you can look for recurring themes. I don't know what to do with this piece of paper every time I get it. The one that I find all the time is the um, charity envelopes where people are sending, see, <laughs> where people are asking you for money. And if you ever um, give people money, then you know a million people want you to give them money. And then I find the same, like this person, this company sends you 47 envelopes and, and you keep picking them up and getting them in the mail going, oh, you know, I might give to them again and you put it back in the pile. And then when you go through all the piles, there's 30 envelopes to the same people. It's like, you don't need all 30 envelopes. If you're giving to Alley Cat's allies, you know, you can wait for the next one to come and throw this one away because there's more coming, right? Is there a way just to stop those coming? I'm overwhelmed with the mail. I just can't deal with it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there is a way to stop that coming, and uh, we should have that conversation. Um, we need to give you a um, do not mail information, and it's actually on the yeah on the website. Is it on the YouTube? Yeah, it's on something. Do not Somewhere. Call that gov. What? Yeah, call that that's gov. for the call. That's not for the, oh, that's not oh, for the letters. Yeah. Yeah. Really we have a thing about catalog choice on the website. I can't remember whether yeah. we have anything about the do not, just the do not mail. Do not mail. Things. Okay. okay. Yes. Can do not mail do anything about these uh, mild neighborhood grocery coupons? I get the mail every week. Oh, no. I don't think that those coupons, no. <laughs> those I think those those made his, just, he's made those go away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just yeah. email them. It's on there. The, oh, you can email the, the, uh, on the circular the itself on the, on the paper itself. You can find the website. You can just email them to stop and they say stop. individual place. Um, yeah. It, but it how many? Like, you want to know? Like, <laughs> six every week, or you make six calls for the whole year, right? <laughs> exactly. And you know whether whether it'll stick for long or not. You know, any one of them that goes away is one less yeah. right you have to throw out. There is a flip side to it. We thought we had trouble with our mail because we went three days without anything, and so we thought it was a little. <laughs> But we so successfully dried up the mail that now we're like, maybe they just stop coming here. <laughs> Hold it's on. unnerving. You talk about the concept of purging okay. files. Yes. Like how often or that might help the, the verdict. Right. No. If you could go and file, right. So um, she's asking about purging files. And, and if you think about the idea of when you pick up a piece of paper and decide you need to file it, you have to think to yourself, why am I filing this and for how long? If it's the utility files, if, if this is where you've been shoving the electric bill and the gas bill, I'd be asking you why. The electricity's burnt. The gas has gone through pipes. The toilet has been flushed. You're not getting that water back, right? <laughs> so those are the kinds of things where it's an ongoing service that unless you have a tax reason to deduct it as long as you're paying the bill they keep providing it and as long as you look at the bill to make sure that you didn't just pay a bill for a hundred thousand gallons instead of your usual 10 then you're good right so that's one that i wouldn't waste the time to file like i would pay it look at it hey it looks all good i paid it off it goes the check is, you know, the cancel check going to show up in my bank account so I can prove it if I have to, and then you can let it go. Yes, ma'am. I was going to say for purging, now that we have these fabulous phones, uh, put it like January 15th every year, purge files, and then it never bolts up on you. you know? So she's do it the first time, 
then it's really then it's easy every year. Yeah. What so she's that. saying that she, she's just saying no, put a reminder in your calendar on your calendar and say repeat mm -hmm. yearly. Right? You can just create a little reminder on the calendar and say it's time to go dig out the files. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, so I'm, the utilities is one that you can throw away quickly. The tax stuff is one that you don't want to throw away for a while. So it's going to go in a tax file and be, you know, it's going to depend on what kinds of paper it is, but every file you can look at and go, okay, how old is this stuff in here? When was the last time I pulled something out? And if you go back into it and see, here's the explanation of benefits from 2003, you can chunk them, right? And not feel any stress about it. Like, those bills are long. Nobody's coming after you now. Like you settled all that up, right? Because if you didn't, they would still be calling you. So there's there's ways to go into those files and look and see how old is this stuff and let's pull it out. And you, you will have to make different choices depending on what's in the file. But each of those files that holds, you know, 50 pieces of paper is probably going to be one decision. And then 40 pieces of those paper are going to come out. It's it's not as hard to debulk as you think. Yes, ma'am. Who is waving back here? Uh, oh, yes. So, um, so if if I opted out, which I actually did, I printed it out on your website somehow, and then it was for the mail, and then I put it in the mail today. Are you saying I just meant I won't be getting any grocery ads? No, no, that is a different marketing list that you're opting yourself off of. I like to know what's on the at which store. So, so those things will still come. The grocery flyers will still come. Okay. You're opting out on people that go to a direct marketing list and grab your name for a mass mailing. Oh, like the quick lube people. Or whoever, yeah, whoever buys the list okay. to send you their advertisement. Okay. okay. That's what the do not mail does. I know paper makes everybody crazy. I'm sorry. Yes. The other solution to the if you don't want if you don't want the ads, you know, to be coming, is can't you just go to the post office and fill out one of their cards that say don't don't mail the you know that class of mail? You can still get your bills, but they'll cut out. They you just you I didn't know that. But they'll cut them all out, so you won't get the grocery ads. <clears throat> But, that, but for those that don't want to get it, it's what I'm talking about. Just right. you get I've never card. done that. It's a card. It's just a card, and yeah. you just fill, you just check it. But you don't check the ones, you know, that you do want to get your bills, but you can categorize it and say, don't send this to me. Okay, so I can't, uh, and you know, we're relying on you because I don't. I've never done that. I've never heard of that. So I will. Bring, okay, I will bring a dozen of those empty cards. For there you go. Awesome. Thank you so much. Go to the post office. She's saying there's a post office option to check off particular types, categories of mail that you don't want, but I have not heard of that, so I I can't speak to it. We're gonna wait and show the card on the on the video next time you bring it. Okay. <laughs> Who else? Yes, ma'am. Uh, so I've spent a lot of time working on the whole decluttering process, probably a year and a half now. And um, I thought I was in a really good place. Everything looked real tidy and neat. And as intentional and as conscious as I've been, spaces are just getting filled back up. I don't know if it's time to call you or what. <laughs> <laughs> but I I'm feeling a little overwhelmed with that because I just see another pile. And I'm kind of at the point where some piles are even getting moved around, and I don't like that. And I just, I'm not even sure what the solution is. I don't, I can't figure out why. You know, it's just stuff that's incoming that for some reason I'm not able to, I don't have a place for it or something. And it's, it's kind of getting cluttered back up. Oh, right. Oh. So the problem with the paper is that it never really goes away. So the, Aside from doing the, your finite decluttering project, mm -hmm. you also always have to create a maintenance routine, which is part of why everybody's talking in here about getting going through the mail, throwing out the stuff, yada yada. Because you do have to constantly create a routine where every day, every other day, you're doing the mail. Mm -hmm. Every other day, you're once a week, you're going onto the table and shuffling the paper, right? Mm -hmm. um, just like what she's talking about, I would want to know what's in those piles mm -hmm. and why you're parking them. So, you know, I'd want to ex do a little uh, autopsy <laughs> of the pile and see what's in there. Were you talking about paper specifically, though, or no, just other categories? Stuff. Yeah. So if other things are backing up because you don't think that you have enough room, 
mm -hmm. to put them away, then I would say that um, you probably haven't decluttered as far as you need to. Because if you start from a cubic volume that is completely full, uh -huh. like think of the television shows on Clean Sweep, right? They're, it's pretty chaotic on them, right? When you, if you dial it back to just stuffed to the cabinet doors, then you have no room to add new, right? So you really want to dial it back so that there's breathing room everywhere. <laughs> you want to be able to open all the cabinets and there's air in there in amongst the stuff. <laughs> you want to be able to open the closet and there's air in the closet, right? Some people stop at, I can close the door now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's not far enough. And the truth is, you stop there because the, the journey to get to be able to close the door was so long, yeah. right? Yeah. It was so hard. I do get it. And it's sometimes decluttering, if you've let it go way beyond capacity of the, of the cabinets and the regular storage, and then it's bled into the living space of the house, and you have to push it back to the storage, you know, that's stage one. <laughs> and it, and there's no telling how long that's going to take. And then you have to go in into stage two. I have a client who lives in River Oaks, huge, beautiful mansion on the Azalea Trail one year. I mean, it's gorgeous inside. And when she first called me, I was like, what? <laughs> what are we going to do in here? And then she went to this one closet by the front door and she opened it. And there was boxes with mail <laughs> because she hated dealing with the mail okay. and she traveled a lot. And so she would go out of the country for a month and then she would come back. And of course there would be a box full of mail because the maid had been putting the mail into the box. <laughs> the time she's gone. And then she was like, <sighs> but what she said to me at the time when we started this journey was I want to be able to open all my cabinets and for there hardly to be anything in them. I want everything to be just peaceful inside and out. And that was the picture that she had in her head when we got started. And we go and we've done that all over the place. And she's now getting ready to spend, oh, I've known her for like five years and she's gonna sell her house and yada yada. And we're going through the last little, oh, there's still some stuff of my ex-husband's in the garage bad juju and you know but there's we're opening the doors and I was having this rundown with her about okay what do we got to work on and the list was really short because we've been everywhere and when you go open the drawers there's not a whole lot in there and that's like this is what you just because you have a drawer doesn't mean you have to fit it <laughs> just because you have a cabinet does not mean it has to have stuff to the front and it, it will function a thousand times better if it doesn't Right? Like there's always ways to more compactly <laughs> shove stuff into places, but then you are not making it a useful storage cabinet, you're making it a storage unit. Mm. And it's just as if you've driven to the place and put this, pull the aluminum door down and put the lock on it, right? Like you're not using that stuff if you can't even tell what's in the cabinet because it's stuff full. So you may not have dialed far enough back so that the things that are backing up for you don't have an open place, an empty slot to go put things away, right? I think you're right. Yeah. I thought, I thought, and I think that's why it's a little overwhelming because I thought, you know, after all this time, I've done it. I've, I've done so much, right? And I did, but like you said, it's just it's time around too. Yeah. And you know what? Congratulations that you did it that far. Like woohoo! Yeah. Okay, because that puts you 47 steps above all my clients. Okay, and you did it by yourself, and good kudos for you, baby. <laughs> right? <laughs> and sometimes you have to have a breather, and then you start in for the next round. Because you know the things that you give away when you first start, you're much less likely to give things away. And when I start a big job like that, like Michael Lauren's house when I was working, in the beginning, she had a really hard time letting go of things. And we had to talk about it a whole lot. And she had like, oh, isn't it cute? Yes, I know it's cute. <laughs> but is it staying? <laughs> and we had to have those conversations at great length. Was that her child? No. <laughs> but in the end, there was a point where it was like it crossed over for her. And suddenly she got it. 
And then it was like things were just flying out the door. You, you get practiced at it, right? And so 18 months in, you're probably a lot better than you were the first week that you started, right? So now when you go back into those places, it won't be as hard as it was in the beginning. And she was able to go, you know, they, we did a certain level of work, and then I wouldn't hear from them for six months or nine months. And then I would come back and work for a while, and then I wouldn't hear from them for a year. You know, it's like they need a break. They could do it for a while, and then they're like, go away. <laughs> we're, we're done. They needed a little, and every, you know, give yourself a reward. I mean, the truth is, in order to stay and have a maintained space, you got to put effort into it all the time, right? And if you're trying to keep what's going clear and dig out too, it means you're adding extra time, you're giving away extra time. So it is a project. And sometimes you have to remember that you put a long time into making that chaos and you know you just can't fix it in a nanosecond. Not if you want to take care about it, right? Yes, ma'am. And I was gonna say that basically if you think of every time you walk through the front door, most of the time you have something in your hands. So therefore you you're bringing stuff in, so the process will, will never finish until you die. <laughs> because we're always bringing stuff in, so some things have to go out. And then when you see that big pile, just have at it with, do I use it or love it? Love it means it's a little pretty on a shelf, or it goes in your cinnamon box and closet. Yeah. So either use it or love it. If you don't, like, <laughs> Okay. Yes, ma'am. I don't remember. How long has it been since you did a talk on filing systems? On um, filing systems? Mm -hmm. What kind of filing systems? Um, yeah, that's the question. <laughs> Paper filing systems. Okay. So, um, any of the systems out there, they all have their own. They all have their own category labels, right? Everybody creates the categories how they want to name them. So, like. Filing solutions. Think of, help me think of some of them, Susan. Um, I know I'm, I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> There's you can buy, they're available everywhere. They all come with here's the files, here's the labels you should use, here's the way that you should do it. If you read the filing setup and it doesn't make sense to you, don't buy it. Because there's going to be another one that's going to be set up a little bit different. They're all trying. They're all trying to corral the information, the same kind of information. We all have the same kind of paper, right? <laughs> everybody has a gas bill. Everybody has an investment statement. Everybody has a medical bill, right? Everybody has taxes. We're all trying to corral the same paper. We're just using different names for it. So if the names don't make sense to you, if the cat, you know, you can get some that are categories and subcategories and a million of them and little tabs and sticking up and do it all on the left and do it at left and right and do it in different colors and if there's a million options out there. So the thing is to go for the one that makes sense to you. For some people, it's I need the color tabs because the color triggers me and helps me understand the categories. For some people, it's I need a million categories because when there's only five categories, that's not enough. For some people, it's there's a million categories and that's way too many, I need five. So you have to look and see what they offer you, what they give you, and find out if it makes your head explode or not. <laughs> if you feel like your head's gonna explode, that's not the one for you. That's the signal, right? There's there's no one way to say you need to buy this one because it won't matter. Well, I meant to set up existing files, I guess. Yeah, I'm talking about, you know, buy the package of create these file folders, put these labels on them, whatever. That is a whole, everybody has their version and you need to pick the one that makes sense to you. And then take your files and divvy them up that way. And yes, I was so excited about my filing system, but then I, like for 10 years, I've been married for 25 years. So the kids are 20 and 19 this year. And so they'll both be 20 and 25. It's that empty nest thing that's happening. Okay. Right, so, it's empty nest time. Okay. Yeah, but this, as this builder, I have cursed his name the whole 10 years we've been there because he gave us no storage, but he gave uh, us the rooms, <coughs> no closet downstairs, no storage. Well, then it's like, well, I don't have a place to put all my nicely <coughs> things. And so then I, I'm thinking, I was looking at this morning, what am I keeping up with all their super readers that they got in elementary school and their, you know, honor roll list or this or that? And I'm like, so I let go of some files today because I realized that's a must. <laughs> That is the mother 
Uh, oh my God. Okay, so here, this is the thing about moms. We love everything that the kid does, right? And everything that they touch with a pencil, and they are, it's like everything that they do is super important. And so, Either you're a super organizer and you make really great files with all their names on them and their ages and by year and all that stuff, or you do nothing except shove it all in a closet. Or and the there's, refrigerator. Or the refrigerator. So there's a spectrum of I saved all my kids' stuff. But what it really is, is I can't face deciding which of this is, can say and which can go. And you do a whole bunch of time, you, you put all of their school, 20 years of school, into those files. And then you got to the end, and it was like, whatever, mom. Yeah, exactly. Right? Whatever. That's true. So it's really for you. Yeah. It's moms. It's you're doing it for you. You're not doing it for them. And let me just tell you now, okay? You're lying to yourself. And you're doing it for you. So you had the files. It was a sentimental thing. It gave you a repository and a way to manage the papers that came in the house, which is cool, right? Because like it didn't go everywhere. You went and put it in your filing system. So at least it was contained. But it's one of those maintenances of your life, right? The circumstances of your life change. The kids grow up. They tell you whatever. Yeah. And then you can throw the files away. Or you can go through and pluck out the representative sample of super cuteness. Yeah. And you can let go of the stuff that isn't so super cute. Right? Or you can give it to them. And they can take no. it. Uh, uh, they'll throw it away. <laughs> you can still give it to them and, you know, tell them they have to take it and then they have to throw it away when you're not in the house. You can do yeah, that. Exactly. exactly. Or you can do what you did, which is it allowed you to cope as a mother with the fire hose of paper that comes from a parent, you know, from a kid. Their paper all coming from yeah. school, and it allowed you to go put it away and contain it, so it didn't take over your life. Awesome. I thought. They and now you don't have to do it. About it. Like they get old red. No. 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 They're, they're embarrassed. No. Oh, right. Yes. I, I played a trick on them. I played a trick on my kids. <laughs> I waited till they grew up and had kids of their own, and I gave it to the kids. I their kids. <laughs> So she gave the kids stuff to the grandkids. Yeah. So, Ooh, now, they so now they're laughing at it. There you go. That's and the they way to are do it. milking it to the end. There you go. I like her idea, which was just take a picture of it and show the grandkids when they <laughs> right exactly take a photo. Yes, ma'am. I have a lot of clothes, and I've been working on it for two or three years. Okay. And I had this great system. If I wore it and loved it here, and, and I have a lot of closets too, which makes it worse. <laughs> and if I didn't put it over here, and if I didn't go over there to get it in a year, then I had to give it away. Okay. And I did great with that, but I still have too many clothes. And I'm at the point where I don't wear it, I don't use it, and I don't want to give it away. I'm stuck. I have a dress that I wore on New Year's Eve in 1990 that's a size two. I will never be a size two again. Nor will you ever want to go out in 1990s fashion. Ooh, right? I might want to wear this dress. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, tax, so. deduction. tax deduction. <laughs> right? This is every um, this is every woman's challenge. Yes. I love my clothes. I'm in love with my clothes. I don't have enough room for my clothes. So unless you you know acquire a store where you can store your clothes, <laughs> uh, you got to let go of some clothes, right? So here's the thing. <clears throat> there are clothes that become keepsakes. Yes. Right? Lots of Where, okay, that's the <laughs> problem. Okay? So the older it gets, the smaller the collection of keepsakes is allowed to be. You know, you're wearing stuff now. If you're a fashion chick and you're always adding in new clothes, we have this conversation with Beth all the time. If we have this, you know, new clothes coming in, new clothes coming in, you gotta be, if you don't want the the closet to pack, you gotta let it go. I'm back in. Cool now, one and three out. And that That's helps. good. That helps. I mean, I'm not That's good. That helps. Yeah. If it has a stain, I can wear it around the house once, then it has to go out. Just get rid of it. And I've been doing that. And, but so here's what. So here's, I still don't. I haven't got. It's your most ruthless. Your most most ruthless friend. Oh my yeah. gosh. To come into the closet with you. Oh my gosh. And serious. make you try on your clothes. <laughs> because the first time that she says, "Oh my God, you are not wearing that out in public," <laughs> it'll go. It's dead on. Right. <laughs> oh, trust me. If not your friend, your mother. 
Well, my daughter would be the worst. Your daughter! Yeah. There you go. Perfect. Teenage <laughs> disgust at your clothing. Yeah. Yes. It yeah. couldn't be any better filter than that. Yeah. Yeah. Right? right? So you yeah. get somebody to come in there and try on the clothes with you, and your whole sentimental, you know, haze about how fabulous the clothing is will go right out the window. Because the people that can see you in it will be like, oh, hell no. Well, <laughs> no I'll never wear that dress again. I know it. Right. <laughs> but you know, if you keep one Sometimes dress that keeps a... No, there's, there's, there's a... Yeah, but you... Full of, you yeah, yeah, no, no, no. No. It, no, that's part of your problem. You cannot have a second wardrobe that's keepsake. Yeah. You get to have, you know, five pieces that are keepsake. Ten pieces, like her face just went ash. <laughs> I need to say blood drain. That was it, right? Okay. I'm saying to you, you are not, you didn't, you don't want to surrender your closet space to keepsake clothes. Mm -hmm. Basically, you're you're saying this is a permanent, never going to come out closet yeah. yeah no how much living space do you want to give up to keepsakes no so that closet that needs to shrink down to 10 percent of what it is you should be able to put your keepsakes in the back of a closet somewhere and have them take up this much room i have a walk-in closet worth of keepsakes and another section of another oh honey no <laughs> no okay so we know why this is the problem, right? Yeah. Like that's you've surrendered. Wait, it's not your current clothes that are your problem. It's the no, keepsakes. It's the keepsakes. Yeah. Oh, mm -mm. Okay. Time to get your friend in there into the keepsake closet and walk through that. It needs to be super, super fabulous to you. It needs to make you go, whoa! Like you told me about that dress like three times right now in this conversation. So I'm guessing that's at the top of the list, yes. right? I don't know. But there's a bunch of other stuff in there that is not going to make you that happy. Maybe half of it won't. But it needs to be. I heard you say that. Half of it. Maybe. About half of it. Right? Yeah. See, that, that, that population is one of your problems. If you have an ever growing keepsake population, which is, I'm not willing to let go of this, I'm just going to add it to the closet, that's just going to grow forever, sister. Yeah. You got to let it go. Don't I'm being harsh. Don't get that stuff to the theater department of your local high school. There you go. Costume. Yeah. If it's you know if it's from the eighties, if it's from the seventies, it's from the nineties. It's time to donate, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I, don't, I donate boxes of clothes three times a year. Well, because <laughs> well because that's you got stuff coming in. You're buying current fashion, and current fashion's going out. Yeah. That keepsake thing is your your. I don't want. I like this one too much. I can't decide, and it goes into the into the dungeon of doom. Yeah. You need to think of that as like the you know. Dungeon of Doom over there, and you've consigned it to a slow and painful death in your closet. Yeah. And you need to be taking pictures of those keepsake clothes and letting them go. Put them on, take a picture, let it go. Lay them on the ta on the bed, take a picture, let it go. It doesn't fit. And keep well, yeah, you know, size two, it won't work. But you know, if you can wear it, put it on, take a picture in it, and let it go. If you can't, lay it out, take a picture of it, and let it go. I'm going to try three pieces a month. Okay, so that's 36. <laughs> but you probably have 250 in your closet. <laughs> I have a lot. Yeah. yeah, honey, no. I'm, I'm saying this because I hear that this is the backlog and you need a big solution, not a trickle. <laughs> You're doing the trickle solution on the trickle in, trickle out, and it's working. You need a fire hose in here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm at the fire hose stage. I really am, right? I've done all the trickling and I'm okay. Right. So that's where you're backing up. When you go, this is too cute to let go. I consign it to keepsake. You need to think in your mind, I'm consigning it to die. <laughs> and take a picture of it and donate it now. Don't even let it go to the keepsake closet. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm just curious. She, she has a space for it, so does that... But she's saying that it's, she's backing up. She's filled up one closet and it's going into another closet and she's backing up and all her closets are full. So she's having the there's no air in my closets problem, even though I'm doing all this work to buy and get rid of. And it's because the keepsakes are creeping. They're growing, growing, growing. And you know, yeah, I know you could fill all your closets with clothes, but really... You don't wear them all. Yeah. <laughs> you know I, I don't wear them all. Her and then her. Yes. Um, I'm overwhelmed with paperwork and clothes. And the reason I'm so discouraged is because I'm trying to do some things to help my mom as well, who's elderly. And 
she has a ton of clothes as well. She has two huge closets. So I'll clear one whole closet out and I'll bring it over to the other side. And I'll work from that one closet and try to organize that one empty <coughs> one. I'll buy organizers, belt hangers, the whole nine. And as I'm going through her things, I'll say keep or go. And maybe one out of 20 pieces, she'll say go. She she doesn't want to get rid of anything. How old is your mom? She's 68 now. Okay. So, um, yeah. You're not so, going to be able to do much until she is ready or gone. It's the bottom line that you cannot force someone else to organize, right? Imagine someone up in your closet telling you you got to get stuff out of here, and if you aren't ready, she asked for my help. Well, right, because she's overwhelmed, but she's also not ready to let go. So you have to let her get rid of as much as she's willing to get rid of, and know it's not going to be as much as you would like. And if she makes it through the first pass and takes a break then maybe she can make it through another pass another time. Mm -hmm. But truthfully, some of the people that call me are parents calling for their kids, I mean, uh, kids calling for their parents. I need help organizing my mother. Does your mother want help? No, then I can't, there's not a whole lot to be done there. Sometimes you just have to do as much as they're willing to do, make the effort. And I find that sometimes it's like, she really just wants to see you. She really just wants to be spending time with you, and y'all are in the closet working together, and that's fun for her. And it doesn't really matter what ends up happening at the end, right? Yes. Yes. I have a 35 year year by every book in the series. I have uh, some authors can put, put out quite a few books over 35 years, right? That's a big collection. So, do you love them? Do you want to keep them? I love them. I don't have time to read all of them that regularly. <laughs> right, exactly. So, um, thinning the library is just like thinning the clothes closet, right? You get rid of the ones that you don't like as well. So, you're going to have favorite authors that you love, love, love. And you're going to have authors that aren't as important as they were when you first started collecting. You might try to thin by author first and see if you can take, you know, the old stuff from this guy that you know you're never going to read out. That might help it then. You might read it, but yeah, don't get me started on books. That's a whole other discussion. Okay. Thank you guys. I'm going to stop and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for coming.